Today we're going to look at this robot here. You'll see it's got uh, two stepper motors over here. It's got an Arduino Mini Pro over there. It's got a MPU 6050 accelerometer gyrometer over here. It's got a voltage regulator over there. It's got a Bluetooth link over here. These are stepper motor driver boards over there. It's got some nice wheels. It's got a battery pack on the top over here. And all of this is built on a piece of dot board. So it's not ferro board or strip board. It's actually dot board or perf board. So when the robot starts to fall forward, this wheel and this wheel would both rotate in that direction. So they would drive forward. Now the robot's natural tendency would be to fall backwards, but now the motors instantaneously reverse that way and go that way. So this robot is constantly doing a dance between falling forward and falling backwards. Over here we've got a Bluetooth link. On the balance robot we've got a slave Bluetooth unit. Now when I plug in here, you'll notice this thing powers up and you see that little robot wiggle there, that's where the Bluetooth link now what I can do with this is I can drive this robot forward and you'll see there's a bit of a shake or a bit of a wiggle there so I'm going to take this off it's a little bit top heavy because this is filled with nuts and bolts if we uh, adjust the joystick there we can turn it around it's using proportional integral derivative maths to prevent this thing from falling over. Now the switch is over there, so what happened is I just switched the electronics off. So by no stretch of the imagination is this robot able to stand up. It doesn't matter how carefully you might try to balance, it's going to fall over because these wheels obviously turn and the whole thing is just going to fall over. Let's switch it back on and let it power up. Now what you'll see here is it's operating again. This movement, it gets into a bit of a swaying motion. This is because we've got quite a high center of gravity on quite a big mass up here. So now obviously we would need to go into the programming of this robot and actually change the PID maths formula slightly to compensate for this bigger mass. The advantage of having a weight on top of the robot is that the robot tends not to wheel spin. Notice how, I'm going to let it settle down now, notice how if I take this weight off, if I hold on the wheels and prevent it from correcting itself, it starts to oscillate and it gets quite bothery because I'm stopping the wheel and if you hold that for long enough it'll mess up the maths and it could even fall over like that. When the robot gets beyond a certain angle, obviously it's going to fight that angle, but when it gets beyond a certain angle it just shuts down and when it comes within that active band then it starts up again. This robot would wiggle like this all the time, but it also has a thing called dead band. Dead band is when the robot is for that moment in time when the robot is completely vertical it actually shuts the motors down that's why you see it does a bit of a wiggle and a jiggle the other reason for the jiggle is that these wheels slip a bit so when the wheels slip then the robot tends to move more energetically so it can withstand quite a lot of abuse but obviously beyond a certain point then it just shuts down the remote controller inclines the robot at a slight angle and then it'll move into that angle so there is obviously and then to turn the robot it would turn around like that when you're standing on a sedgeway if you lean forward it goes forward if you lean back it goes backwards and then obviously you've got a control that you can turn and drive the body of this robot was cut out on a German Heiss CNC machine these parts here are all slotting together very nicely. There's quite a lot of balancing robots out there, but I think this, this one is, is particularly good. 
Uh, the gentleman who shared his code and plans with us, Joop Brocking from Holland, find him with a Google search, brocking.net. So you might want to visit his page and like his YouTube videos. But one second is the same as 1,000 milliseconds, which is one million microseconds.